Hey guys, it's Nate, aka The Foot Accountant. Welcome back to the channel. Yesterday was a wild day on the FIFA 23 market, and it almost seemed like EA Sports was trying to crash the market with everything that went on yesterday. We had promo packs in the store on the first early release day of FIFA, by the way. What a way to celebrate. I think there's more packs like that coming soon. We had price range updates that were making things go everywhere. And on top of that, a server outage for over an hour that left the market just stranded and like nobody on the game trying to get back in while everything was going on. So it was a wild day yesterday, a lot of price movements, but a lot of stuff has kind of risen back up to where we were last night and even higher on some cards. So I want to take a look at that today and of course, look at what's coming today on a Wednesday because it's Wednesday and that means Team of the Week Day. Team of the Week 1 cards going away, Team of the Week 2 will be coming in and some silver content that we're used to seeing but in this early stage of the game could be pretty influential and maybe you have some decent rewards starting today on Wednesday. So we're going to look at all that and maybe some coin making methods as well because price range updates and extinct cards, that happens pretty often in this game. So if you know how to make coins in those situations, you're going to be better off for many coin making opportunities later on in this year. We're going to talk about all that and more in today's video. If you're excited for it, hit the thumbs up, subscribe if you're new. And of course, thanks for all the support lately on the videos. You guys have been absolutely killing it. And it's so nice to see that you're enjoying the videos, the comments, the likes and everything. I really, really appreciate it. So thank you guys once again for that. I wanted to get that out there. So let's talk about all the craziness that happened on the market yesterday. It all started with price range updates. A lot of cards early in the morning got some very necessary and very needed price range updates because they were either extinct or not selling at their minimum prices for what EA had listed before. Think about guys like Varan, Ruben Diaz, Tony Cruz. Those guys weren't even selling at their old price ranges. A lot of people were just trying to sell them to get coins to go and place in other places, buy other cards. And then you had the other side of the coin where guys like Benzema, guys like Tonali were actually extinct on the market, zero cards on the market, and EA updated some of their price ranges so that they could go higher in price. And this is what I want to talk about today and break down is what happened yesterday on the market and how you can make coins off of this very very often uh, when there are extinct cards because think about it promo cards drop they're extinct right away if they're extinct for a couple of days you know you kind of have this sort of movement happen every time that ea updates a price range to go higher um, on a card that is extinct so that's what i want to break down today and in looking into some of this detail and also look at how the market moved yesterday with all the crazy stuff that was going on anyways so here's our example this is kind of the perfect example and a lot of people i think made coins off this tonali card in two different ways yesterday of course if you snipe tonali at 10k and you sold him after he got his price range update, you made coins. Good job, right? He went from 10K, his price range goes to 200,000 coins, and then he gets listed like crazy on the market because right when the price range gets updated, people start listing, they start undercutting, and the price just drops, 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 and it hits a low point. It's gonna hit a valley, right? And that valley, it's hard to time, it's hard to watch and to know exactly when it's gonna be, but nine times out of 10, when a card hits a valley, actually I'd almost say 10 times out of 10, when a card hits a valley after being extinct, you normally around or above the price that they were formerly extinct at, the card starts to rebound back up because when you have a card that's extinct, that also shows there's some demand there. Like people wanted Tonali in their teams because they're using Rafael Leal or they're using Tomori and they wanted to use him in their teams and they couldn't buy him off the market hence why he was extinct, right? The, the demand was outweighing the supply in the price range that he had set up. Same thing with Benzema, right? You had Benzema that was extinct um, at, uh, what was the price? It was like 32,000 coins. He then gets upgraded to a 250 price range. He gets listed all the way down to 53 and then starts to go back up. So he hits this, this valley, right? Why does the valley happen? Again, because people that invested in the card or sniped Benzema or owned Benzema when he was before he went extinct or even sniping him while he was extinct, they list the card up because they're making coins too, right? So you have people that are selling cards right away to try to make their coins on the investment. And then people like me, that are looking to buy the card to make money off of it and to profit because also we know there's people out there that will want to buy this card or maybe even like ourselves will want to try to buy this card because it's finally on the market again and we can get it right and there's demand there for a card to be used in this game that's how this stuff kind of works so you always have a price range update list 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 gets low and then it starts to rebound back up if you time that low point right and it's a meta enough card you will make coins i bought three benzema yesterday between 55 and 60 000 coins i bought one a little bit too early at 59k and I sold them all at like 73 
74,000 coins. I'm at the very, very late night time period right now, as you can see. Benzema is like 77K, so technically I could have listed for a little bit higher and, and held on and waited a bit longer to sell this card. But I was very happy with that flip, right? That I made myself almost 15K per card after tax, uh, maybe even a little above that on, on two of those in you know like what, a two three hour hold like it really was a solid flip and it was really useful time for my coins as i was doing other trades and looking at the market and, and doing other stuff like it was it was a nice flip and that's where a lot of people made coins yesterday after the price ranges were updated and that's a way that you can make coins every single time they update price ranges on this game if it's what we saw of, like for benzema and tonali where the card is extinct and then the card gets listed as it did. Now, a guy like Varane, this is kind of a interesting situation because this doesn't happen very much where the minimum price is where the card is selling at. This is probably only going to happen just a few times throughout the year this year, but it's almost the same way with Varane, right? People that packed Varane couldn't sell him for 101K, which is what his old minimum price was at. So now when his price updates, they're like, finally, I can sell my Varane card. And they flood the market with listings. He goes all the way down to about 48,000 coins, I believe, was the price that I saw on Footbin for the Varane card. Um, if I can find it really fast and click on it here. Yeah, Varane was down to 47K, I believe. You can see here on the graph that is 101,000 coins, gets updated, boom, down to 48K. He gets dropped and then he starts to go back up because people are like, wow, I want to finally be able to use Varan and not pay a price that's stupid high for what he actually should be on the market. So again, you have that intersection of all the people selling and all the people wanting to buy and a little bit of a rise after that. So just watch for later points throughout this year when there are extinct, extinct players, especially if they're pretty meta. And Cuckoo's another great example, extinct at 100K. He went down to like 130 right? And then boom, back up to 155, where he is now. Remember this sort of movement and fluctuation for later on in the year, because you will be able to make coins on it more times than not. Now, what made the market even more interesting yesterday is right after all these price ranges got updated and everybody was trying to go out on the market and aka buy their Nkunku card or sell their Nkunku card to try to take advantage of the whole price range scenario or just to sell the card so that they could get coins and, and make some profit off of that whole situation too. The servers went down for like an hour. So there was, you know, no activity on the market. And then when the servers came back up, it was right around the content drop time, 6 p.m. UK, 1 p.m. for me. And EA put 25K packs in the store. Promo packs this early in the game is crazy. Now, I actually opened them, so they don't show for me um, because I had my 4,600 FIFA points that I opened up yesterday. My best pull was Harry Kane and Edward Mendy. Nothing crazy, but those 25K packs were actually kind of solid for the 4,600 FIFA points that I still had um, because... It, it gave you some better packs than just opening the 7.5 case and it was worth it, right? I packed a couple walkouts, packed a couple other cards that were very valuable for SBC solutions and some gold cards that were worth like 5, 6K. So those were nice packs to have, but it was a surprise to have the promo packs that early and to see EA drop those. But again, whenever you see promo packs like that in the store or any day where we get an SBC that brings supply, right? Remember last week during the web app when we had that early access one SBC that dropped a two rare gold players pack tradable and it made prices on the market go down? Any single day that we get either a pack supply SBC that brings tradable supply on the market, like marquee matchups or a one-off SBC like this one, an SBC that people want to do. Let me rephrase that. It has to have demand for people to want to get the pack. If it's a terrible pack and it's an expensive SBC, nobody will want to do it and there won't be much effect but any day they drop a tradable pack supply spc that's somewhat worth doing you're going to see movements like you saw yesterday on cards that weren't affected by all of the craziness um let's say with the price ranges kingsley Coman's a card that i've been watching a lot because i bought him at twenty four thousand coins on monday this kingsley Coman card yesterday was like forty seven thousand coins uh right around or before the content drop i'll just show you the graph because it's easier to to spell this out and to show it but a lot of meta cards and a lot of cards in general on the market yesterday dropped with the supply but then rebounded afterwards take a look at Coman right before content 47k with the 25k packs in the store and you know the panic and the supply that that caused he went down to forty thousand coins i even saw him under 40k and now he's rebounded 
rebounding right back to where he was at 48,000 coins. Because when there is supply that is put on the market, you have, again, one of two things. You have supply that's hitting the market, more cards that people are packing, and two, you get more coins on the market. So what you're seeing right now tonight on our normal nightly market rise as Nate records his videos is cards that are reaching points that are as high or maybe even a little higher than they were before. Holland is 175,000 coins. What did he hit last night? 164. So Holland, after all of yesterday's craziness where his low point was 120K and 130K during all the pack supply, he went up to even higher amounts, right? There's more coins on the market. Now people that maybe didn't have enough to afford Holland yesterday can afford him today after opening those 25K packs and getting a few more coins. So you're seeing that top tier go up in price after the pack supply yesterday. You know, your rare cards like your heroes and your team of the week cards are going up higher as well. Um, KDB, 380,000 coins. Like that is literally the highest that he has been yet in packs, I believe. He was 370 last night, went down to 270 in the panic and the supply of the 25Ks and the servers going down. And now this guy's back up to 380K. So all I'm saying is, Watch out for other days of pack supply when you see, and there's going to be multiple days like this in the future. And even throughout the first couple of weeks of this game, whether it's a pack supply SBC or um, something like a, you know, packs that are in the store that especially right now where people have FIFA points to open, they're going to want to go ahead and get this stuff. Marquinhos was 55K yesterday and now he's back up at 70,000 coins. Like it's just crazy how you can trade with these fluctuations. And when you know what cards people are going to go out and buy, then you're going to see those sort of market movements ahead of time and you're going to be able to capitalize. Now there is a downside of this, right? As I mentioned, there's more supply. So Lacroix was like 10,000 coins before the packs were open yesterday. I believe he might be now like 8,000 coins. He was 7,000 coins earlier. Yeah, he's 8,400. So your lower tier cards are the ones that get hit the most with supply. So that's the other side of the coin. If you owned any lower tier cards yesterday, uh, some of them did drop a little bit, but a lot of the cards that we were hoping to go higher, right? The higher tier metas, like the Coleman, the Marquinhos, the Messi, Ronaldo, you know, they actually went up even higher with more coins being on the market. Now, Speaking about this as well, more coins being on the market and pack supply, I want to turn the focus a little bit to, you know, what's going to happen on the market the next couple of days. And what I really think about that is on Friday, if they're dropping promo packs on a random Tuesday, well, not so random, but on a Tuesday where people are getting onto the game for the first time on the early access launch, Friday for once to watch with all the promo cards that we're going to have in packs, there's absolutely going to be promo packs in the store again, 100%. I believe there will be, whether it's 15K packs, whether it's 25K packs like we saw yesterday, they'll have something in the store ready for people to spend their FIFA points on. That's going to bring more supply. Last year at this very date on this Wednesday before once to watch started, this is when some of the panic selling started. We've looked at the graphs. You remember what I've spoken about from last year. And this is where you see some of those lower tier cards start to get sold off because people that invested in them or people that have them in their teams start to think, oh my goodness, these guys are gonna get supplied a lot as the full game drops on Friday. More people come on to FIFA. More people spend FIFA points because there's ones to watch cards in packs and the lower tier cards and basically everything on the game in general is going to get supplied and packed from all that goes on with the big pack opening promo Friday, right? A lot of supply is going to come on the market, especially with the pack weight in these last two FIFAs the way that it has been. So what I think you might even start to see today, and of course, we've got we, um, Division Rivals rewards tomorrow as well that will bring some supply to the market. We'll talk about that in tomorrow's video a little bit more, but... You might see some people start to take the cash on these low-rated cards. Again, guys like Lacroix, guys maybe like Alan St. Maximin, he is a little bit up there though. You know, this is this is like the time frame where I would say, you know, the Alan St. Maximin being as high as he is, I, I'm tempted to take the cash. An 80-rated right back, yes, he has 94 pace, but an 80-rated right back, I'm very tempted to take the cash on a card like this right now. He's near his peak. Same thing with Lacroix, I believe he is near his peak. Darwin Nunez being... 82 rated and 9,000 coins, the same price as Timo Werner. I, I believe that he is near his peak. So your lower rated cards, 82 and below, that are 
more of the starter team potential or cards that are mid to starter team potential, those are the ones that I'm taking the coins on or looking to sell here in the next couple of days, just because you're gonna have people that start to worry about that supply and the actual supply, it's gonna hit really real this weekend too. So that's the kind of thing I would talk or start to think about and look at your squad if you have any of those cards in there or maybe you have investments of cards that have gone up. I would just start to be a little bit careful uh, with those. Uh, but again, if you have a higher tier card, here's the, here's the kind of dilemma in the situation that we have right now, right? Think about a guy like Lionel Messi. Lionel Messi is still under right around 300,000 coins, right? 290, 300K. Are you really going to panic sell a 91 rated Messi card? Let's say you bought Messi for like 200K last week and you're making money on him right now. Should you sell this card? In my opinion, no, you shouldn't. The only reason you would maybe want to sell Messi is if you bought him for like 300K tonight or last night and you don't want to lose 20 or 30K if he goes down to like 275 on the weekend. Because again, like I said, a lot of supply on the weekend is going to hit and there might be a little panic selling even on cards like Messi or Ronaldo or some of your other top tier cards like Salah or Neymar or even a guy like Jota or, or Benzema or Rashford or Holland. But some of these guys are even going to be out of packs come the weekend and they won't get supplied like Holland. He's getting a ones to watch. His ones to watch card is going to be impacted, not his gold card, right? That's another thing to kind of think about and, and put into the equation here is that some of these cards are, are not even going to be in packs come this weekend anyways. Um, but, you know, on the high tier stuff, I don't think you have to sell it all, especially if it's a card that's going to be out of packs. There's really not that much of a reason to sell because like we talked about, as more coins come onto the market this weekend, some of the top tier cards... That's just going to mean that more people can afford some of these top tier cards like icons and heroes and some of the higher tier gold cards that we were just naming off. Those cards could actually continue to rise into next week, especially as we head into the first weekend league next weekend, where there would be even more demand and people build up their squads to try to get games in, to try to get the best team possible and go buy players for that next weekend league. So that's kind of what I'm thinking with like the meta tier market right now as well. You know, if you're if you just invested in a card and you want to take the cash, uh, like like this Benzema maybe, or let let's say you even bought somebody like Rudiger for like 40k on the web app, and you're like, Nate, is my time to sell now? If you want to, you absolutely can, right? I feel like we're in that kind of bubble period before we get towards Friday where there's a little bit of panic, a little bit of sell-off, and a little bit of supply. So, you know, there's a couple cards that I do feel like are a little overpriced. I still think Usman Dembele is overpriced. I know he's five-star, five-star, but when you look at Rafinha, only 39,000 coins. You know, really similar cards, and, and Dembele just has a French nationality and a five-star weak foot compared to Rafinha being 4-4. Four, four. I guess he's 5 Five five and contained to four or compared to four four is a big difference, but I still think that card to me being seventy five k last year and just as meta and op being a hundred this year is a little confusing to me. Renato Sanchez, I know he's cracked, I know he's insane, but fifty seven thousand coins to me, I, mm, I I would be careful, guys. I really really would. So you might start to see some of that take place today. Um, you might see some of it take place tomorrow with rivals rewards and as we head into Friday. Now all I'll say too is. You know, if you see a bit of a drop in price this morning, I'm talking the early morning hours, USA or into the daytime, you know, a couple hours after this video uh, is released, it's the same thing that's been happening literally every single day. Watch these cards for a little morning drop off because like yesterday, Holland went from 164 down to 127. And these fluctuations are absolutely tradable and uh, tradable in and with. Um, so definitely watch the market on some of these cards if you're up in the early morning or whatever time frame you know, five, six hours after this video released uh, is for you. Watch for those drops, watch for those trades. That's been a really consistent market movement over this early stages of the game. A lot of cards move in there. So if you're looking for maybe one opportunity to get in on a card for your team, or um, if it's the right card, maybe just to flip, watch out for that today as well. Now, let's talk about today a little bit more, especially with the content, because there's some sneaky investments that we can actually make right now. And I'm going to talk about that because today, of course, we are getting Wednesday content. Team of the Week 2 is a part of that, and we'll talk about that in a second. But EA said in their pitch notes, the launch update pitch notes, you can go and look because it's the true truth. We are getting Silver Stars back today. The Silver Stars friendly is returning, and that means people will have motivation to go on the game, use silver cards to either obtain a player reward, and maybe they drop silver beasts and drop some sort of objective or pack reward as well. If there is some sort of objective and pack reward 
people will be very, very interested in the Silver Stars game mode. One of the best sets of advice that I can give you right now would be look at the market for silvers and try to find some cheap beasts. I mean, a lot of you guys know how to find these cards. Just search them up on Footbin. And I would look for silver cards that are pacey, silver cards that have good links with their nation or with their league. And you're going to see some of those go up today in value as people build out some silver squads to take on each other in that friendly game mode. Because again, if there's decent rewards involved, people will be onto it. It's something to do. It's something different. So again, watch for your, even if it's just a way that you want to try to make coins today, a guy like this Krishna, right? I know he's not in a very popular league, but he's 90 pace, you know, Elia, a 90 pace card, like 300 coins right here on bid. You literally have zero risk for a card like this. Um, but again, you focus on better nations, in front of focus on popular leagues, some of those guys are going to do very, very well for you. Uh, and you're going to be able to make some coins on those. Watch like the MLS as well. Turkish Super League here for this Freddy guy. Uh, you can see he sells for 750. Maybe him, maybe that card tomorrow goes for over a thousand coins. That's the sort of thing that we're looking at. This Club Rouge guy, Buchanan with 92 pace right mid. Like he's a thousand coins, you know, like some of these cards are going to have some pretty nice rises. So whether it's you want to make coins off of this or you just maybe want to be prepared for the potential rise there. Ooh, like this guy, Dembele, he's Premier League 89 pace. That's a card to watch out for, for sure. Already a pretty expensive though. Watch out for silver cards today. Maybe put your silver team together. Look through that. At least get ready for it and know that it's coming today and that there will be very many opportunities to make coins on silvers because they will be in demand now also today new team of the week and i'm going to show you a couple team of the week predictions because this is actually pretty insane um it is a team of the week that is based off of the international games friendlies and whatnot nations league that have been happening over the past week or so so the team week's always up in the air when they do an international week like this. Also, we know that we'll probably not have dynamic images. That's something that we have seen in the past. If we had dynamic images, that'd be sick, but I don't expect any of them. I like this prediction a lot right here. This is from Harrison. I'll leave a link to it down below in the description. Van Dijk 91, Akanji, Dalo, Richarlison, Lozano, Modric, Fofana is in here. There's some pretty nice cards in here. Um, of course, he is including two cards that are potential ones to watches with Akanji and Richarlison. Richarlison being a confirmed ones to watch. It would be insane if we had that situation like we had, I think back to FIFA 19 with Felipe Anderson, where he had an informant team in the league two, and then a once to watch card, which came out two days later. It is not impossible that Richarlison or Akanji could get an inform. It could happen. Will it? We don't know. We'll have to see. We have no leaks right now as I'm recording this video, but I'm sure that we will have some soon. But this is how a team of the week two could impact the market. I'm looking at one card in here, two cards actually right now. Two Prem center backs could be released in this team of the week, Akanji and Van Dyke. But Akanji in particular would mean that there could be another special card alternative in the Premier League for a center back. And this is the kind of way you have to get your mind to think right now is that if we have an Akanji inform that people might want to use in their teams, think about the price of Saliba inform. It, depending on the price and how good a kanji looks, a card like this of Saliba could actually take a hit in price today if the Akanji card is good and if he's, you know, depending on how expensive he is, it's it's a substitute, right? A, a new Premier League center back in form that could be dropping could affect ones that are already existing if people think that new card is more useful to them. It might have good city links, right? Doesn't have as good nation links like Saliba does, but a lot of people use Manchester City cards. You know, Ederson, Kyle Walker, Cancelo, you know, midfield and attack. There's so many city players that people use in their teams. Something that I'd watch out for would be the potential for a guy like Akanji if, that's again, it's an if he gets in to drop the price of a guy like Saliba on the market. So that's just something I'd watch out for and be careful with today. But that could happen in many other areas as well. Um, if you see a, a sick midfielder drop or if you see, you know, like in Team of the Week 1 this last week, we had we had De Bruyne, we had Sun, we had a Mobley. If there was another Serie A striker, if there was another, um, you know, another striker or left wing from the Prem to get in or something like that, you know, that's the kind of movement that you maybe just watch out for and start to think about as we head into today on a Wednesday with new cards dropping on the game. But that's going to be very exciting. If you, Some people are even saving their like pre-order um, team of the week pack for today. It could be a bang in team of the week. I want to show you one more prediction actually, because this is the prediction that's on Footbin. 
This prediction seems crazy to me. Take a look at this. He's got Akanji, Marquinhos, Van Dyke, Salah, Messi. If this is the team of the week this week, that's like an inc- that's like a top. I don't know. That's like a nine out of ten team of the week, man. Messi, Salah, Marquinhos, Van Dyke. That seems pretty pretty much too good to be true. Um, I, I don't know if Messi or Salah is going to get in. Salah is, of course, one that a lot of people want to see get in. I think he has potential. He wasn't in this original prediction, uh, but I think he has potential. I think Van Dyke has potential. Um, he's in both of these, so. You know, we'll just have to see how all out that EA goes with it today. But, I mean, we had a pretty solid team in the week one with De Bruyne and Son and Immobile. Saliba was decent, you know. So, some solid players in there. We'll see if they continue that for team of the week two on FIFA 23 today. So, that's kind of what to watch out for and what to look for today on the FIFA 23 market. If you enjoyed today's video, smash a thumbs up on it. Comment down below if you have any questions and subscribe if if you're new. I will see you guys in tomorrow's video and today on the stream. It's been Nate's Foot Account, and I'll catch you guys later. Peace out.